Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Process Podcast. Hello, Tamarind, and hello, Liam. Hello, Edward. Hello, Edward. How are we going, guys? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, we had a pretty big, or all of us, competed in High Rocks this weekend, which was super fun, um, but have definitely feeling been feeling a... Uh, very lethargic and a little bit spaced out but luckily today's the first day that i actually have a little bit of energy so mm. feeling pretty good have you been feeling that as well yeah i would say like monday and tuesday i was pretty like foggy my brain my legs were so sore mm. <laughs> i remember you coming in and said on monday that actually you weren't very sore and i was like what i'm dying but i'm always a two there you are a two there <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. i actually am very surprised at mentally how good i've been feeling post yeah. high rocks yeah. Like I actually haven't had fogginess. Mm. I slept really well the last few nights. Mm. I've been waking up feeling a little bit lethargic, but generally mm. speaking, like being feeling really energized that day. Yeah. My training's been super easy though. Like I took yeah. a whole one full complete rest day and yeah. just a bit of upper body. Even today I took it pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. In, in hindsight, I should have probably not trained at all on the Monday. Probably just went for a walk, but I ended up doing some upper body stuff. Mm. Um, I just was, time. I literally was just a, no frame of mind yeah. to do anything on Monday, <laughs> remotely hard. Like my body yeah. was just just felt wrecked, mm. and my quads so sore still today. Like it's <laughs> so sore, mm. crazy That's sore. So funny. Yeah, pathetic. That's okay. Uh, but I'm 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 still very happy at how quickly I bounced back. But still comparing myself to everyone else in the gym, yeah, I I probably have bounced back the slowest. Mm. Mm. Even even like our forty five year old members who did the pro division <laughs> bounced back way faster yeah. than I did, which is slightly concerning. <laughs> no, I mean I agree. It does seem that way, but I think as well you uh, carry a lot more awareness than a lot of others. And thank I think you, Tam. But I'm I'm still just gonna say <laughs> <laughs> I'm still recovering slower. I really appreciate you trying to make you feel better but i saw like mehmet doing straight down some push-ups and i was like i genuinely couldn't do any centric right now yeah. i would literally collapse yeah. to my neck and probably snap my spine so i was like wow i just stood there i was like hats off to you that you're a lot more yeah. impressive than i am um anyhow um just wanted to say i had a bloody great time doing high rocks and i loved being there with you guys tammy you completely crushed it liam you crushed it too i crushed you it. did yeah. actually crush it um, and just being with our community the whole weekend yeah, was that just, was the, that was just such a good sure. weekend <clears throat> and the whole lead up to it. Anyway, mm. more reflection on the High Rocks to come. If not, we might have done it already by the time this mm. comes out. Who knows? Um, we are here talking about habits today. Mm. Um, I asked you two to be on this podcast because I feel like you two uh, are very good when it comes to building and creating habits. Tammy, you're someone who talks about it a lot in the work that you do and the passions that you have within coaching. Mm. Uh, Liam, so do you actually. Yeah. But I think in terms of two people who practice what they preach, you two were the first two names I thought about within our coaching team when it mm. comes to actually, when you guys say you're gonna do something, I think you have some very methodical practices yeah. that you follow. Um, maybe they're things you're conscious of, maybe they're not, mm. um, but you, you seem to execute it well. And I would say that I, it's something I think about a lot as well and have become quite conscious of. I think all three of us have read James Clear's Atomic book, Habits. Atomic Habits. Yep. So good. Um, yeah, I was gifted it by one of our clients, Krishma, mm. like three years ago. And I was like, wow, what? This book, This is a book that every single human being Incredible, needs right? to read. And I know you guys have read it and referenced it a lot as well. Yeah. So yeah, today I'd just like to talk about I think, well, just anything, anything to do with habits. Mm. And I'd love to hear about some habits that you guys have been created, creating recently. Mm. Maybe habits you've tried to create and you failed on. Mm -hmm. Strategies that you typically go to to use. And then hopefully we can provide a bit of a framework to our listeners. Uh, if they are thinking about creating their own habits, just some things to think about. Mm. But I think we should start by defining what a habit actually is. So, Tammy? You want to take this away? I mean, I can give it a shot and I think I might need Liam to jump in as well. But phone a friend. Phone a friend. Um, I would say that a habit is something that is automatic. So it's an action or something that is repeated so often that it becomes subconscious. Like you mm. don't need to think about it anymore. Yeah, I mean, just to echo what you said, they, they do say that a habit is an unconscious behavior. Um, so it's something that you're doing and you don't even realize that you're doing it, you know? Mm. If I was to ask you, Liam, how many habits you have, so subconscious behaviors <laughs> that you do on a daily basis, do you think you'd be able to list, if you take yourself through morning mm. through to nighttime as quick as you can, 
the habits that are now subconscious and a part of you i mean i think this that's a very hard one because i think that it's just your it becomes it's just your total behavior throughout the day yeah you know what i mean it's like it's actually just who you are your habits are actually make you up as a person right because i mean there are i mean the first thing i think about is i don't know why this is the first thing i thought about but wiping my bum after a poo yeah, <laughs> because yeah. you know you how many years have we been wiping our bum yeah, after true. a poo yeah. that is that that is a habit mm. but you know what? i i still have memories something you had to learn right yeah when i used <coughs> to have to call my mum to wipe my bum yeah and i used to think i'm never going to be able to do this <laughs> i remember sitting there thinking like wow like how does every human being do this themselves like there's no way I'm going to ever learn how to do that myself. I remember sitting there thinking, I, I still remember it really. I feel like I have questions. Like, how old were you that you remember that? <laughs> you <Like> developed it. <laughs> <laughs> Good memory. No, but I genuinely Great remember. I, I still remember the toilet in our house and yeah. still just sitting there one day being like quite deflated and being like, yeah. <sighs> coming on i have to be calling my mum when i'm an adult to wipe my bum it's gonna be so embarrassing but then you also that injury as well right where people had to come and wipe your bum that was many years later that was ma- <laughs> no i know <laughs> i'm just bringing it up as well yeah. thanks yeah. mate uh <laughs> yes i had a i had a uh, uh assist on my yeah, bum hole yeah, yeah. yeah which happened because of stress mm. <laughs> in the cross at open <laughs> 2016 thanks for bringing that up liam yeah um and yeah that caused some bum uh, wiping not at all related to what we were talking about yeah. but yeah I think it's funny, like, challenge. yeah, what you're saying is so true. It's just we're made up of a bunch of habits that we've accumulated over the years. And there are so many little things that we don't even notice, you know, like I'm someone who gestures with my hands a certain way. Um, you know, the first thing that I do when I wake up is I have the habit of waking up a little early sometimes. So I like click on my watch. I'm like, oh, go back. You know, mm. like that's something I do. Even, you know, sometimes I kind of giggle to myself in the mornings because I'll automatically like get the milk out the fridge, pour it in my cup, like do all the things that I normally do. And I'm like, it literally feels like I'm part of this like simulation that's like happening mm. day in and day out. It's like Groundhog Day. Yeah, right? exactly. You know, you know something else I think about is when I, so I, I when, when I, fin- when I finish my shower and I dry myself with a towel, Yeah. there is a sequence that I yeah. do that is exactly the same every single time. Like I couldn't even tell you what it is right now. But you do it. But sometimes I think about it. I'm like, it's so funny how I do exactly the same things every day. Every day. And yeah. then when I try consciously think about drying myself, I literally don't know what to do. Yeah. I'll, li- I'll literally be like, hey, well, what do I do next? And I'm like, no, whoa, that's, that, that, this that, feels that weird. weird. <laughs> I never dry this part of my body. Yeah. And it's like, it just shows that when I'm on autopilot though, yeah. like it will be yeah. the exact same sequence. So I guess what we're saying is that some habits form just actually subconsciously. Yeah. Sub- we sub- subconsciously form the habit and then they become automatic. Mm. But we don't even realize it's just a repetition of doing something and it just becomes the thing that stays. And I think the thing that the world struggles with and what we typically work with is the conscious creation of a habit. Yeah. So this intention that we want to do something or improve on something or add something to our lives or take something take out something of our away, lives. Yeah. Mm. Um, how do we cultivate the ability to do that? But you have a bit of a Yeah, something. like when you were saying all of that, I was like, oh my God, that just <clears> jogged <throat> my memory of like when I was learning much more about habits, I think it was like Atomic Habits and some other reading that I was doing. And it spoke <clears> about <throat> our brain being like an association device. And it also is incredibly smart where it's like well we can only actually use our conscious brain for one thing at a time like Mm. we can't multitask so by building the habits that it's built it's just making life easy for us that we don't need to think about those things and we can do whatever it is that we're wanting to do Mm. by thinking about it so actually i know this kind of going off track a little bit for me if i am like super stressed out and i have a lot on my plate and i'm finding that my brain is going left right and center trying to think of all the stuff that i have on my plate i'll brush my teeth with my left hand or like i'll do something that draws so much attention to what i'm trying to do that it brings me into the now yes anyway into present moment yeah yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. no nice nice hand but i think what you were saying at the start there which is basically the, the concept of why habits are important. Yeah. It actually allows you to be more efficient and do more in your life. Exactly. When you have more, areas. yeah, you yeah. have more subconscious <clears throat> behaviors that yeah. aren't requiring as much thought and effort mm. that frees up more resources for you to do other things. Exactly. But we know in that process of creating the habit, there is a lot of focus and there's a lot of resources and a mm. lot of like thinking that needs to take place. And it's kind of like yeah. that barrier that you have to push through till it becomes one day automated and then you move on to the next thing. Mm. Yeah. What are you thinking, Liam? And I think we go through life like not knowing like how many how many habits like we do, right? Until someone actually asks us. And I think that's the importance of what we do here at the Process Programming where we're taking clients on 
it's like that initial consultation it's like take me through your normal day from when you wake up till you go to bed mm. because you'll realize or that person then reflecting on their day like oh shit why do i actually do that and then the co- then then it's your opportunity to actually ask them okay why do you stop at five o'clock every day to the shop and buy a can of soda for example like yeah. they just might not notice that they, they do that every single day until you ask them right mm. <laughs> yeah very true yeah I want to ask you guys, are there any habits, new habits that you've added to your lives recently? And if so, what did the process look like? I, I can start because it's something I just added really recently. Yeah, absolutely. You go. So I went to the dentist four weeks ago. <laughs> the first time in like <laughs> far too many years, maybe five years. Yeah. Um, and after they had drilled about a kilogram of plaque off the back of my teeth. Oh my God. Super open, as you guys know. Um. They were like, Ed, you need to start flossing more. And I was like, well, I floss every night, which is a bit of a lie, to be honest. It's more like once every three nights. But my my flossing process was not up to the standards of what the dentist wanted, which was like, get into the gums, mm-hmm. both sides. you got to use a mini brush as yeah. well. And, you know, she kind of gave me a bit of a lecture on like gum dental hygiene. Mm. And I was like, right, okay, I'm gonna, I want to add this to my repertoire. Like, I want to add this to my toothbrushing routine because yeah. I think it is actually really important and I don't I haven't cultivated the habit I know that it's important for me to floss mm. but it's just one of those things if I don't feel like I can be if I can't if I have that a moment of I can't be bothered I just won't do it mm. yeah and that's clearly not a subconscious behavior yet. it's something that's still yeah. very conscious to me so yeah. I was like right I'm gonna do this that night I was like you know, she said you should start this tonight. I was like, right, I will start tonight. So I bought the brushes. Mm. Um, I bought all the floss I needed. So that, yeah. I think that was a crucial first step. Like you've yeah. got to actually have the tools and the resources to be able to actually execute your habit. Yeah, That's absolutely. important. And then I stuck a post-it note. So I use post-it notes a lot when mm. I create new habits. And the post-it note I stuck was, I stuck it onto my mirror cabinet of my yeah. bathroom obviously because that's always where i brush my teeth yeah and so every time at night time i'm going to be in front of that mirror i see mm. the post-it note mm. and i also now leave the mini toothbrush the mini brushes that go between the teeth yeah and the floss i leave it out of the cupboard yeah and i leave it actually next to the sink so that i've got a yeah. visual cue to do it and i think for three i haven't missed a night through and that's including coming home at like 1 a.m at the rugby sevens yeah and i still flossed yeah. <laughs> and literally still flossed and mini brush my teeth oh uh, that's so Very funny pumped. You know, I think something that's great about what you're saying is exactly what they speak about in the book. You know, Liam brought it up before, but it's about, you know, start with a really small action and then make it obvious. So mm. you've already simplified the step for yourself by buying the things and the th- the materials that you needed, but you went further than that. You didn't just tuck it away in the cupboard and kind of like hope for the best that you would remember. You really made it obvious. You're like, post it note, I'm going to leave it out. I'm not going to put it in the cupboard. Um, that's really cool. That's awesome to hear about. Thank you. Yeah, I think my biggest takeaway from like the Atomic Habits was the concept of the habit stacking. Yeah. Yes. Right. That was the, when I first like learned about that concept or that principle, I was like, wow, that just totally makes sense. Mm. And for me, like the. the so can you explain what habit stacking is? Yeah, so habit stacking is, well, you already know that you've got a habit. For example, for you, it was when you brush your teeth. So it's okay, right. Well, I already know that I'm going to brush my teeth every night. Well, mm. I'm going to try and stack my habit on, ta- on top of my current habit. So for you, it was brushing the teeth and you wanted to floss. Mm. So you were ha- like stacking that habit on top of each other. For me, like my recent, probably not the most recent, but it was like a good year that has properly taken me to develop this habit was meditation. Mm. Yeah. So journaling was something that I was doing. So it was that was my habit. So to stack on top of that, I wanted to stack my meditation. So how how I made it obvious for me was always putting my cause I listen to I use my earpods in the morning to meditate. So I would put my case on top of my journal every single morning. So when I wake up I grab my journal, I've already got my headphones in my hand ready mm. for my meditation and that's how I stacked my habit. So, so cool. <coughs> before you could get into meditation, you'd you'd cultivated the habit of, of journaling, journaling every single day. Yeah. And when I s- I want to ask that how long were you consistently journaling it journaling every day for? Um, probably like a good, like consistently every morning, probably like eight to nine months. Cool. Wow. And since you've been adding meditation, how consistent are you hitting that? That's like I can count on one hand the amount of times that I've missed it in mm. the past six to eight months. Is that a self guided or is that a guided? Um, bit of both. Mm. I, initially, it was um guided with the AirPods. Now, um, uh, mix and match between them both nice 
Yeah, I want to jump in on the habit stacking thing because mm. habit stacking is something I think about a lot. Yeah. I think that was the, the one, th the biggest thing I took away from James Clear's mm -hmm. atomic habit was that concept. It's mm -hmm. like piggyback on the success of other habits you've already created. Mm. And um, so, you know, actually just using a client here yeah. as a good example, one of my clients, you know, she, she had been speaking about wanting to improve mobility and range of motion. Mm. Um, you know, she's now kind of in her 60s and is really acknowledging that something she wants to maintain in her later years of life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so her first question was, you know, what, what can we do more in our sessions to improve range of motion? And I was like, well, you know, we only got two opportunities. That's two hours a week. That's not really much time mm -hmm. at all to be making significant improvements. And that would mean we'd have to take away from something else we're already doing. And the things we're doing, which is strength training, which is really actually what you, you really need that That's what you mm -hmm. need. ability you do, you do need, but you've already got a decent enough level. But if you want yeah. more, let's look to add this to maybe something that's happening on a daily basis, something outside of our training sessions. Yeah. And so the thing we decided to add into her day, and this is something I've been, I've been coaching for 14 years now, mm -hmm. um, wow. was joint rotations. Yeah. So it's just like in the cars. morning, let's just do some cars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let's just do your ankles. Let's do your knees. Let's mm -hmm. do your hips. Do your spine, your neck and your shoulders. Do you think you can do five minutes? Yeah. And she said, yeah. And actually, I think it started with like, well, actually, how much time do you think you can you can put towards this? And at yeah. first she said 10 minutes. Mm. And I said, <laughs> do you really think you could hit 10 minutes, something brand new every single day? Yeah. You know, that's now 70 minutes of work. Do you think you can really do set 10 minutes a day? Yeah. Mm, how about five minutes? Yeah. OK, let's do five minutes. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. Five minutes versus no minutes is already a massive mm. improvement. And so he said, okay, we're going to add five minutes of joint rotations to every morning. How's that sound? She said, that sounds great. I know this girl because I've coached her for so long. And I know she has a tendency to say yes to things like this. So <laughs> I obviously I dug a bit deeper. I said, okay, we need to be successful with this if it's going to become something that you're going to do for the rest of your life, which you, we're, say, we're saying is something you do want to do for the rest of your life. Yeah. Because she'd already played around with cars and saw and felt the benefit. And she said, how can I get this into my life now? So we basically went through a whole morning and try to search for a habit that was already in there yeah. that we could stack this onto. Mm. And so it was a cool exercise. And basically we got to the point where she says every single morning before she brews her coffee and she always brews the same coffee and like she's a stick to routine. So like the exact same coffee, the exact same time is all measured. Had the cup has to be placed in the same area, has to be poured. I have to drink it sitting here looking out of this window. Like that's how routine yeah. she is with her coffee. Mm. Wow. But before she goes to that process, she turns on the radio yeah and like she's old school so she listens to like bbc radio one and yeah. loves to listen to the more than radio mm. and so i said do you hit do you listen to radio every single day said, no. without fail i will turn that radio on before i go make my coffee mm. so we said well how about if we add in our five minutes of cars the moment you turn on your radio like is there space next to your radio where you can stand and do cars mm. she's like yeah it's like it's in an open part of my living room mm. so I'm like, what do you think do you think we could turn on your radio do your cars and make your coffee and she was like that sounds very achievable mm. and you know we're now four months in and she hasn't missed a day nice wow but that was cool because you know for me the whole thing i was thinking about was how can i stack this on a habit that yeah. she already has and then it was a collaborative process mm. to be like let's find a habit that's something you're never going to miss mm -hmm. and let's throw this little five minutes on top of that mm. yeah that's super smart you know i think it can happen you know habit stacking can happen with happening before a habit you do so you know for example um for some of my clients who are pretty busy and stressed individuals they have the same routine where they know they're about to have their morning coffee it's like okay can you take one minute before you have your coffee and just breathe and relax a second before you get into your day or it can even be um I'm trying to think of like the stuff that i've done for myself um my habit that i mean you guys have really spoken about like life and like meditation and mm. doing things like that but mine's like make the bed you know like i grew <laughs> up not being very good at that mm. and kind of embraced it for a really long time uh and i've been really lucky that all the partners that i've had leading up to this point have good bed makers yeah, yeah. real good bed makers. <laughs> so i've never really had to do it but when ant had left i was like i'm gonna make the bed this is me now i'm gonna be this person and now i literally can't leave the house without so me. So what, what was the habit stacking approach that you had there? Was the it a habit stacking approach? Uh, the habit stacking approach was what I would do in the morning, right? Like it was like walking myself through the procedures. Um, obviously, it's a little bit different with Ant being back now and me leaving 
before he gets out of the bed, but it's get up, make my coffee after I've made my coffee, take some uh, breaths before I get into my work, then have my shower, wipe myself down with my towel without really thinking about it. And once I wipe myself down with the towel before I put my clothes on, I'll go and make the bed and then I'll Mm. get my clothes on. So rather than stacking it on another habit, it's just stacking it after something. Well, I guess it is a habit, Mm. right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, just as you were saying that, I was thinking about a subconscious habit that I have that I realized the other day, I broke the habit. I I changed up the routine and Mm. it made me mess up my habit. That was was washing the dishes. (sighs) And I actually really like washing the dishes. You've told me that before. Yeah, Yeah. I enjoy the process of like cleaning, but the dishes I always wash immediately after my meal. Mm. So the moment like both of us, because myself and Cammy, you know, my partner at home, we eat dinner and breakfast together all the time at the table. The moment both of us have our knives and forks laid down the plate, which yep. signifies our meals are over, mm. I will always take Everything. take the plates and bowls straight into the kitchen and wash yeah. straight away. Yeah. The other night, Cami was out. I was I decided to eat dinner in front of the television just for a change. Yeah. And as I finished, I left my bowl out because I was in the middle of watching telly. I didn't want to stop watch, watching what I was watching. Yeah. And it basically got to like an hour and a half later and I was just looking at this bowl being like, I don't want to wash it. I don't want to wash it. <laughs> I'm like, but I was like, what's wrong with me? Like, why? I love washing. Yeah. Like, why can't I wash that thing? But it was just because I had broken the habit wow. of being so used to just finishing and washing yeah. that now I'd created this new routine. My body was like, no, nah, you don't want to do it. Mm. And it was like a real effort. I almost thought about just leaving it in the sink and doing it in the morning, which I probably haven't done in like genuinely 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely my way to go. I'm like, you're a sink. I... You're a. You're a uh, what's called a plate jengera. I'm a no, not like multiple. It'll just be from like that evening. Mm. But I'm very much very productive in the morning, and the thought of it at night for me is like a no. Yeah, I'm the same that way. Yeah, um, you, you leave it in the sink as well. I mean, I'll do like I'm very much like a morning person as well. Like I like to get stuff done, and if it's towards the evening, I'd rather just like leave it in the sink. For example, like I make a, a shake every night. Yeah. If like. It was close to my bedtime. I'd rather just leave it in the sink mm. and wash it first thing in the morning. That's that just that makes total sense. Why all your water bottles have <laughs> undiscovered <laughs> bacteria? There you go. That's why uh, covered all. It's over. funny though. Like I'm not gonna lie. Like it feels good if I do it at night, but I just prefer to do it yeah. in the morning. So I have, and it's like this is a quote which I think about a lot because it doesn't actually apply to everything. But it's like you know some. And I'm being, I've been guilty of this in the past as well, but you, you apply this quote to life and it's like, this is how you should do everything. But it's like, <laughs> what you, you know, what can be done today? No, what can be done tomorrow should be done today. No, is that right? Don't put off today what you can do no. then what tomorrow. Is what that can one? be done today can also be done tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tamarin that's, that's Tammy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, what can be done, what can be done today should not be done tomorrow. Yeah, that's something like that. Would always right, yeah, yeah. So Hilda always says it to me. And so I always have that quote ringing through my head Mm. when it comes to things like dishes and cleaning up and leaving my home in a tidy state for tomorrow. Mm. Um, But that quote also does not apply to so many other things. Like sometimes I'll see my letters and I'll think, what can be done today? (laughs) Three months later, it's still not opened. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, nah, nah, that's stupid. (laughs) Anyway, that's funny. So let's talk about times where you guys have created habits but haven't been successful. And I'd like to know why. All the time. All the time. Maybe can you think of something recently that you you like had great intentions yep. but just didn't execute on? I wanted to like get lights off earlier and I wanted to put screens away earlier um, but have failed miserably at that. There are like a lot of things that I can think of but that's one that's <clears> specific. <throat> like my wind down routines before bed have definitely gone a little bit out of whack. Um, I think that things become habitual, but life changes, which makes like you even said that thing that normally is like subconscious and an innate behavior just doesn't happen. And then one day turns into two days. And then now this is actually a new habit forming because a new, yeah, a new bad habit that you don't a want new to bad have has now become a habit. And before you even like realize you're like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. I'm back to do it or it's like something completely different it's just your body again trying to find an automated way of making whatever it is a little bit easier mm. can you think of an actual example so no, sorry we'll yep. go back to your nighttime routine yep. why is it do you think that 
so obviously you laid out what you wanted to achieve. Yep. Why do you think you weren't able to achieve it? Um, I think that given my circumstances right now, it was just a little bit too ambitious. Mm. Um, I think, like you said, I had all the best intentions. I have the knowledge. I have the tools to be able to do it. Um, but I don't think that I, I think I had some willingness, but obviously not, not enough. Mm. Um, and I should have started smaller and I should have maybe not allowed myself to, I guess if you would like, okay, look at a week and it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If on Monday, just things got a little bit crazy, I should have just got back to it on Tuesday and I didn't. And because of that, that's why I couldn't maintain it. And then it eventually got to a point where I was like, well, not doing it anyway. So, mm. so what you just said there is probably what makes me not execute on well-intended habits the most, which mm. is biting off more than I can chew. Yeah. And, and I think this is something that a lot of my clients struggle with as well. Uh, it's that biting off more than you can chew, committing mm. to too much yeah. that is mm. actually not sustainable. And I always remember a quote that you said in one of our PD sessions, which is like, if it feels, is that, can you say it please? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <I> always, <laughs> I'm butchering it's every quote, quote today. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't remember. It was really great though. The nine out of um, 10. Yeah. So if you were to look at like an effort level scale of one to 10, um, 10 being something like with my eyes closed, absolutely there is no doubt that i could do it uh and one being there's no chance it's going to happen if you are trying to form a new habit or you're trying to change a daily action or create a practice if it's anything less than a nine it's actually too hard mm -hmm. like you should revise and review it enough times so that it becomes a nine because the idea of it is is that small actions compound and eventually mm -hmm. what is a nine out of ten becomes a ten out of ten um, you know, maybe I'll just jump on this with an example. So with a couple of people or even myself, let's just say, you know, I currently get to bed at 830, but really to get the amount of sleep that I probably need, um, I need to be in bed really for like quarter to eight, but going from 830 to quarter to eight, like 45 minutes is huge. It's a big jump. So a lot of people are like, yeah, like, okay, fine. Maybe I won't do 45 minutes. I'll do 30. And I'm like, that's still, still huge. Like it's massive. So the idea of that is to just continually revise it and be like, okay, well looking at this, it seems too easy, but that's going to be something that changes my trajectory and still moves me towards progressing towards my goal rather than trying to get to the goal straight away. It's like linear progression, which is what we talk about in the gym all the time. The thing I always think about though, when I, when I try and think, okay, but make this realistic, Ed, yep. make this something you can achieve. Yeah. The two things that all I always think about is number one, that seems too easy. Right. And number two, it doesn't seem significant no, enough. It's not enough. Yeah. Right. It's like, well, what's the point in doing that? What's the point in just moving bedtime forward five minutes? Like that's not going to make a difference. And yeah. that's, I think the trap that we all fall into. But yeah. the thing that I always, I will always try and zoom out now and think bigger picture. So Absolutely. it's like, okay, five minutes a day, mm. cumulatively over seven days. Yeah. You know, that's now 35 minutes. Yeah. I've, in, I've moved my body clock forward. Yes. You times that over a month, then you times it over a mm -hmm. year. And as soon as I take that perspective, I'm like, that's yeah. significant. Yeah. And if you think about, you know, exercise, like if you want to add more movement to your day, or if it's even, I think something we all want to do is like do more mobility work. Yeah. And people think that a mobility session has to be a 30 to 45 minute session. It can be literally four minutes. Three minutes yeah. of yeah. mobility work is better than no minutes of, mo no yeah. minutes of mobility work. Yeah. And if you do three minutes every single day, you know how that compounds over a week and a month and a year, yeah. like that's significant. Absolutely. And I think it, I always need to do that zooming out process now yeah. when something does feel too insignificant that doesn't seem worthwhile me doing to zoom out and say, look at the bigger picture actually. Like that's actually a substantial improvement on what yeah. I'm currently doing. Absolutely. And then that, that context makes it more, yeah. seem more worthwhile. I really like that idea. I think, you know, Precision Nutrition is a company that just puts out so many great resources and like educational infographics and things like that. And one of the things that they really speak about is looking at your life or your habits or anything that you're trying to create or change um, rather than it being, I guess, like a definitive I'm either a hundred percent, I guess like all, instead of having an all or nothing approach to those sorts of things, we should start to consider things on like a dial, but the dial doesn't have a zero. So, you know, what you spoke about just then is it's like, there is no pause it mentality, but rather we have anywhere from a one to 10, you know, like what's the least amount that you can do that's still 
pushing you forward. Yeah. yeah. And then what's the best possible thing that you can do, you know, like, so you have that range from one to 10 and then you make adjustments based on how your day is. Like what resources do you have available? What stresses do you have coming up? That means you have to just kind of tune up or dial up or dial down on that mm. um, scale. I love that. Yeah. Something I th that just jumped to mind was like when I tried to cultivate the habit of journaling, Yeah, it was, I knew the intention and the reasoning behind it was very valid and it resonated with me. So it was mm. like, I had a, a fairly strong why as to like why I wanted to start doing it. Yeah. And I guess I was probably going through like a bit of my own healing journey at the time. Mm. Um, and so I went from no journaling to buying a book of lined pages and writing for five minutes. Yeah. yeah. I was like, that's a pretty, like pretty aggressive mm. step up from no mm. journaling ever to writing paragraphs and pages of what's on your mind. Yeah. And, and I fell off that habit pretty quickly. In fact, yeah. I never even created the habit because it was just too much too to chew. Much. And then when you bought me the five minute journal for mm. my birthday in 2018, I think it was, or maybe 17, 2018, which was literally, this is five minutes of your day. Yeah. Like literally two and a half minutes in the morning, two and a half minutes a night. Mm. That cultivated the habit of me writing something in what mm. looks like a journal. Yeah. And I did that for two years. Mm. And it was probably two years and like 10 of those journals before I was ready to make the next step f yeah. step up, which then progressed to um, Liam buying me a journal. Uh, yeah, yeah, you bought me a journal. Yeah, the Today Well Spent. Yeah. Today Well Spent, yeah. Which was like, so it was what like, a good gift. yeah, hey. Liam bought me a, a journal, which was in a progression, which yeah. like, it's now probably 10 minutes of journaling yeah. I do every single mm. day. And, but I was ready to make that jump because of the two years I cultivated with a five minute journal. Now I was mm. ready to do something bigger. Um, so that's like a, that's an example of biting off more than I could chew, having to step back, mm. go basic again and rebuild up. And mm. I'm probably not at the stage where I still like a guided journal. Yeah. Like today well spent asks me questions and, and requires me to tick boxes and yeah. fill in spaces. Mm. I don't know if I'm ready yet to just go to a blank page, which was my original intention all those years ago and just freehand journal. I think it's like finding what works for you, right? Like yeah. some people will not like the prompts because sometimes actually yeah. having a prompt makes it more difficult because it's asking you a question that that's not really what you're wanting to write about, you yeah. know? Um, I think something that was really important that you spoke about there is like, you know, having a solid why. I think some of the things that come up is like, number one, obviously trying to understand why you're doing something, but like the deeper rooted cause, you know, beyond... I just want to get fit. Like or what? everyone else is doing it. Yeah, everyone else is doing it. It's like, what is it actually going to give you? Because wanting to get fit is great. And I'm sure it's like some people's deeper surface level thing. But for someone, it might be, I want to feel confident in myself or I want to be around when my kids, you know, I want to be here for when my kids get older or something like that. Um, so having that solid why was really cool. And then what was the other thing you spoke about there? Um, the 1%. Like the consistency. Ah, yeah, the consistency <coughs> thing mm. of like things feeling like a little bit too small. I think, mm. you know, the action of someone trying to get from where they are to something else, we're not just trying to create that habit, but we're trying to create an identity with ourselves, right? So it's like, I don't want to just run five kilometers. Like I want to become a runner. I, I don't want to just <coughs> journal for five minutes. I want to be someone who journals, mm. you know, like, I don't know. Yeah, I think the, yeah. the, the whole the concept of like the consistency over intensity mm. and especially when you see like new clients come to the gym like i've just onboarded a new client he comes to mind and he's like oh how many days should i train and he's like oh I'll train five days i'm like five days of training is a lot a lot of training yeah. why don't we just start with two if you're consistent and you can kind of like gamify it with your clients if you're consistent for the next two to three months and you're hitting your two sessions okay then let's maybe add on a third but don't chew off too much then you can uh, sorry, don't bite off too much that you can chew. Mm. I mean, when I look at myself in terms of where I've failed in like building new habits, yeah, we've talked about before, you know, like especially in the line of work that we do, is like I can control my mornings mm. and I can control my evenings, but I don't have really much control what goes on in between because it's just so busy. Sometimes you come in here and it's just like a whirlwind, there's so many things to <laughs> yeah. do. You're talking to clients, you're programming. So I've noticed myself. When I fail in my habits, it's because I've tried to put in a habit in an area where I don't have much control over, if that makes sense. Yeah, controlling the controllables. So, like, my, one of my goals was, like, reading more. Like, I was like, oh, I want to read more, like, just during the day. I wanted to read, like, three times a week. Yeah. That was my goal. 
And I realized, <laughs> I, <remember that. laughs> I realized that I tried to put it, like I wasn't putting it where in the areas that I could control, which for me, big areas that I control is the morning time and the evening time. Yeah, the bookends yeah. of your Those day. Those bookends. So I, I wasn't placing <coughs> it there, which then reflecting now on this podcast, I was actually setting myself up for failure, essentially. Mm. So what were you thinking? You were just going to have some random times in the day yeah, you were just pick up a book? Yeah. But that just doesn't work for me. Like I'm a very routine person mm-hmm. and I do have a lot of control in the morning and the evening. If I'd have probably sat down and had cultivated a bit more of intention, mm. sat down, looked at my day, right, well, if I want to read, when's the best time I can read? In yeah. the morning, maybe, maybe I can, maybe I can't. In the evening, probably mm-hmm. got more chance. Why don't I try and stack it with another habit in the so evening good. that I currently do um, nice. instead of trying to wishy-washy put it in the middle of the day on a Tuesday afternoon, right? Yeah. yeah. Something something I'm thinking about here is like another habit that I tried to instill recently. Um, and I think the whole concept of this is like, if a habit doesn't work out yeah. or you bite off more than you can chew, yeah. Yeah. like don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah. No. And so like good. there's always a chance to rejig and, and, and reset that habit. Mm. So, you know, when I think back, probably three, four years ago, um, I'd just broken up with my ex-girlfriend and I felt like I had all this time in the evening that I didn't have yeah. before. Mm-hmm. And... I decided that this was going to be a time when I was going to finally teach myself how to play guitar. Mm. Like I'd wanted to do it for years, but never ever had the time to do it. And so I bought, went and bought a guitar, yeah. hired a teacher. I hired a teacher specifically to help me cultivate the habit because I knew that I wouldn't be able to do it myself. And I've mm. had to show up for this lesson once a week. I was probably going to play at the very least once a week. Mm. And then, you know, that basically got to the point where at one point I was playing my guitar every single night for up to an hour. And probably in, you actually were a part of the very start of it in America. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> games. Yeah. I had like four non-blondes was pretty much the only song I could play really badly. Uh, so many <clears> mess ups. <laughs> so bad. In a tiny little house, you guys literally had to listen to it. Like, yeah. it fuck. <laughs> um, but you know, at that point in time, like it was easy to play every night because yeah. I had this like... I also was fueled by this desire that I'd wanted to play guitar for like 10 years before mm. that. And it was like, wow, this is so cool. I get this opportunity to do it. Then I started to see improvement and I kind of got really hooked. Mm. Um, and I'm not blaming this on my current relationship whatsoever, <laughs> but you know, and <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. Your fault. <laughs> so you know, got back into a relationship and, and now that time in the evenings, I it's wanted gone. to allocate it somewhere else. I wanted yeah. to alloc- allocate it to my partner, which meant I now didn't have the time to play guitar anymore. And it got to a point where I literally didn't touch my guitar for about three months mm. and I would look at this guitar and like it would make me so sad that I'd lost the habit. I'd gone from playing every night yeah. and actually feeling like I got and progressed really well and got quite good yeah. mm. to not touching it for three months. And I was literally beating myself mm. thinking you're one of those people that's like Start just something. failed so miserably at this. Yeah. And like you've got two guitars, Ed, you spent like, 15,000 Hong Kong dollars on these two car- guitars and probably all the little things along with it and you haven't yeah. used any of it. And so I wanted, one day I just said, right, I've got to create the habit to get back into this. Mm. The first thing I did was I moved my guitars out of my office and put them in my living room. So you so could I, see it. I had to see it. And James Clear talks about this being the cue, yeah, make right? It obvious. Make it obvious or it's a cue. Something that, that's, that is going to remind you or trigger you to pick it up and play. Mm. So I moved it into the living room. And I said, that's going to help. And I actually kind of did for a bit. Yeah. I'd see it sometimes and pick it up. But then I just like put it down after five minutes and then the habit just never formed. Mm-hmm. So that didn't really work. Um, so then I said, right, I'm going to play three times a week. So I put it into my diary. Mm. to be like play guitar on it was like a monday or tuesday thursday saturday mm. the quieter days in the evening when i got home earlier didn't work it would my alarm would go off and be like nah just stop it. <laughs> not today <laughs> not today, not today. <laughs> don't want to do it so then it became okay once a week yeah once a week on a sunday like at the very least just pick up your guitar once a week and just have a little strum and play yeah worked for a little bit but you then i did pretty good at one point you were doing it yeah but then i just regular. i just got to some sundays where i'd be so tired from yeah. the week and i'd just be like I don't want to do something where I have to, this is my one day off a week where yeah. I don't, where I try not to do work. Mm-hmm. And yeah. now guitar feels like work because I'm having to like think and learn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that didn't it. work. So where I've now arrived at was I was like, okay, like I failed on all these things over the last yeah. six months. What can I do that's going to hold me accountable? So I actually signed up for a guitar course nice. where I had to pay for it. Yeah. And it would like give me weekly lessons. And so that's where I'm at now is that, to, to reinstill the habit is that I want to, I paid for this course, I'm paying mm-hmm. a monthly subscription. Um, I'm going to do a lesson every once a week, on yeah. a Saturday or a Sunday. It doesn't matter when I do it on a yeah. weekend, but somewhere on a weekend, 
do this lesson and what that then triggered was like just getting into the routine of playing again and then i started going down rabbit holes of like wanting to learn songs again and so that's kind of where i'm at, at the moment and i've have full intentions to one day want to get back to playing every single night like i genuinely want to be in a band mm. at some point before i die like where me and my bandmates we're playing let's go <laughs> we're playing Liam. ed won't be playing guitar. i'm really sorry mate, but you're triangle. not a strong <laughs> candidate to be on my band i'm, I'm not <laughs> sure what you're gonna bring Hey, I'd bring manager. lots of value. Oh, team I'd, I'd probably team, team manager, like market <laughs> and stuff for that. Yeah, team you hype, got it. No, team hype it. man. Yeah. He could also be part of like the posse. Yeah, yeah dancer. <laughs> you could be security. No. Dancer. No. You'd look. You could be security because you'd look good, but you'd be pathetic yeah. at actually stopping. <laughs> Someone would run at him and be like, crossed. "Just keep going." Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you look good. Uh, anyway, thanks for listening to my ramble. That's okay. Um, but I think yeah, I think the biggest thing for most people is that the habit that they're saying they want to create just seems too insignificant so they don't even start it at yeah. all. And I think the most important thing is just just start as small as you can be, as yeah. small as you can as as you can go. Yeah. And the nine out of ten rule, like if it's less than that, mm. don't even attempt it. Well they speak about like, you know, I guess a lot of people like whenever they speak about athletes or they look at like what we do, they're like, you have so much motivation. And I think that people think that motivation comes first, but really it's action that comes mm, first. And then right. you build on success like yeah. we are wired to enjoy success i'm pretty sure you have like what serotonin oxytocin mm. and dopamine get released so it feels fucking great so mm. do little things and then achieve success with that and it feels great and i'm pretty sure dopamine's part of your like addictive behaviors yeah. or like reward system as well and then it becomes something that your brain craves it's like i want to keep doing more yeah like let's win. i yeah. want to feel that like that again well, it's like set, just setting yourself up for success. Like yeah. it feels good when you're able to tick off. If yeah. you've written something down and it's manageable and yeah. you know you can do it every single yeah. day and you're doing it every single day, that feels good. Absolutely. Right. Mm. I'm trying to think about other th other strategies that we can that we can share that can yeah. help people like in creation of their own habits. Something yeah. actually going back to this this client who was um, started a new habit of adding cars. Like sure. I actually found in a little bookshop a habit book. Yeah. Which was basically like just a little grid on each week and you would write down the habits oh, you like want to get. Yeah, and oh, you would just tick yeah. the box if you yeah. if yeah. you did it. I know lots of people use this with whiteboards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they write down the habits they're trying to form at the at the time and, and yeah. when they they're successful on the day they give a little mm. tick. But I think something else that jumped into mind there is I guess the number of habits that you should attack at any one time. Mm. I think that's another mistake that a lot of people make. Yeah. Especially getting into especially in the health and fitness realm yeah, because, because there's just so there's, there's also so much there's a so million much. And one. like within nutrition there's a billion things that you can improve at yeah. within training within stretching within mindset within yeah. sleep and i think we we again going back to biting off more than you can mm. chew but like how many should we really be focusing on any one time we i'm pretty sure we can only actually pretty much focus on one um the more you distribute your time trying to figure out how to figure out these other things the more you're just becoming you're just really average snap, yeah. at all of those things and you never really actually make it a habit so it sucks like it does suck that that's the case but you will by choosing one thing and you know using that scale of one to ten that we spoke about um just naturally by doing things slowly and progressively and taking your time with it like actually Giving make sure time. exactly yeah. it's like i think they say there's no period of habit formation by the way people no, the say gold like number for ages is 30 21 to 60 but days or yeah, like yeah. blah that's not the case like we're all very different the world is nuanced like we have bumps and bruises that happen along the way and i think that you know it's once you feel like you're capable to add on to that that's when you should but if you haven't been consistently hitting it so ed's example of having that habit tracker was incredible it's like okay over a month you know okay a week i've got a little cross as in that means i've mm -hmm. done it if i have five out of the seven days awesome now that's like my starting point yeah. cool next week i get six great my average has gone up the next week i get seven the next week something happens so it goes down so really it's not a habit just yet like i still mm -hmm. actually need to keep working on it and until it really you're hitting consecutive weeks of yeah it, until it's like you're actually not having to think about it anymore you're like i don't really even need to track it because mm. it's just happening happening automatically that's when you're like cool i can add something different yeah and i think that's another place where people trip up is that the long game is is not exciting it's mm. not you know and it's, it's pretty like boring yeah and it's like <laughs> yeah. what like you're not gonna let me do anything else but yeah. this <laughs> yeah. in, for four weeks yeah. And yeah and then i think but like going back to the nature of what we're talking about here 
is essentially the habit is something that may stick with you potentially for the rest of your life. Yeah, for the next 60 years. And in the grand scheme of things, like what's four weeks in the grand scheme of 60 years? Yeah. Especially with people who constantly fall off the wagon. Yeah. Mm. Right, you know, and we, ha- we all know those people or maybe you are those people, but, you yeah. know, you constantly try to start things, but you always fail on them. Yeah. And, you know, just imagine if you'd rewound seven years ago and you'd actually made that thing stick. That yeah. the tiny little thing that where you failed. Yeah. Exactly. Where would you be now? Yeah, it's... It's really interesting. I think, you know, Liam and I were just discussing before, there's a quote that speaks about um, time magnifies your actions, right? So if you were to magnify good habits over time, it makes time your ally. And if you magnify things with your bad habits, it makes them your enemy. Mm. Um, I like that. It's, yeah, just super cool to think about it in that way, to just be like, you have to have a slightly macro scale view of everything. Um, and I think as well, like something personally for me that helped me to start to change my habits a little bit more, especially with my mental health stuff was, and was pretty brutal, but in a good way, like really honest. And it's the honesty that I needed. And one of the things that he had said was what you've been doing up until this point and what you're doing right now is the reason you push people away. And it's the reason you've not been successful. It hasn't worked for you. So why are you still trying to do the same things? And then I was like, whoa, (laughs) that sucked to hear but it's probably true you know so you know if you're someone listening and you feel like you've you know stuck in a rut and you're someone who definitely like latches on to trying to do too many things at once and it hasn't worked for you you know the end of the day we're trying to run our life experiments and part of that experiment is trying something new and testing a new hypothesis and maybe what we're saying might not work for you but you don't know until you try what's um, we're talking about quotes a lot in this podcast what's the quote where they say the, the, <laughs> we're the kind of form butchering, yeah, we're butchering butchering terrible for today. <laughs> yeah, the form of insanity is doing the same thing over and over yes, again, and, that's and, an and, and quote. expecting uh, the same results. Yeah, and I think in health and fitness, especially <clears> with people we work with, you see it happening all the time. It's like so much they've been doing this, trying different things or the same thing for thirty years and expecting something different. Yeah, and I think when it comes to like nutrition, I see this a lot, especially when we like someone comes to the gym. It's like they're expecting to dive straight into like the calories and macros and the supplements and the timing. Yeah. And we all know like the pyramid of the base is the lifestyle essentials. Yeah. It's like this client that I talked about before, a very interesting character, but was, we're taking them through essentially building the lifestyle <coughs> essentials. And one of the simplest ones was like, well, you, we know that you eat lunch mm. every single day at a certain mm. time. Do you get any sunshine? No, well, I don't, I don't get any sunshine. Okay, sweet. Perfect opportunity. Let's take that lunch and go, is there an opportunity for to go and sit in a park? Yeah, there's a park right next to his office. Sweet. So he's now eating his lunch away from his computer <coughs> and so he's getting good. sunshine. So you're yeah. killing, I was going to say killing birds with two stones. <laughs> two stones <laughs> and one bird. <laughs> nice. I really like yeah. that concept. Yeah. Um, That's a new rule for this podcast. <laughs> yeah, <right>? You're, <laughs> not, al- you're <laughs> not, not allowed to get a quote right. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> yeah. uh, Sorry, Tammy. That's, That's that. okay. You made me forget what I was going to say. Um, what did you say, Liam? It's like with the, the whole calories, calories and macros and nutrition. It's like people ah, are trying to go yeah, straight yeah, yeah, yeah. into. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Hmm. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess something to think about for a lot of people, and that I need to remind myself of this a lot, is for some reason when it comes to us and the things that we're trying to achieve in our life, we kind of just expect it to happen. Yeah. Um, but you know, there are so many different scenarios that we can put out that kind of make a little bit more sense to people, like maybe you're someone who was first learning to ride a bike. Mm. You're watching your child take their first steps. You're someone who's maybe been in the gym for a little bit longer and you realize that to be able to get something like a muscle up or a skill or to improve your weightlifting techniques takes time. But yet we expect something so different when it comes to our lifestyle and nutrition practices and the things that we do out, uh, you know, like for our health. Um, That's just triggered a thought that from... That's from it rejogged my memory of something from James Clear's book, but it was the concept of the plateau of latent potential. Yeah. Do you remember that? And basically, he created this graph where, <coughs> on the graph on the on the y-axis is results. Yeah. And the on the x-axis is time. Yeah. And what we think when we start a new habit, when we're striving for something, let's call it adaptation. If we're going to be really geeky, but sure. seeing something, we want to see an, something result from like the, the hap- yeah a change exactly. We see it as this very linear line. Yep. That just goes straight. Yep. But what actually happens is when we start, nothing actually happens for a while. Yep. 
you know, nothing does. And you've got to just persevere and push through and cultivate and that, that habit. disheartening sometimes. Yeah. And it's super, yeah. And so, yeah, basically, you know, at the start, often nothing happens. Or we mm. may get a, a really quick improvement in something and then yeah. nothing changes for a while. Yeah. And then suddenly we get this, over time, this big uptick of where we start to see mm. change and results happen. Mm. And the difference between that perceived straight line going across yeah. and the realistic line of being underneath that line where the results yeah. aren't happening that area is what we call the valley of disappointment valley of disappointment right? i remember which is that where you, th- yeah. you feel like you're doing everything yeah but the results are not showing yeah and that's often where people drop off a habit yeah and that i'll always remember this image from that book of the stone cutter yeah and the stone cutter who sits there with a chisel and a hammer and he's hammering at this rock and he hits it over a thousand times and mm. for 999 hits the rock does not change mm. and on the a thousandth hit the rock cracks in half. Yeah. And I think always remember that like representation of this concept of like plateau of latent potential, which Mm. is like, you just got to keep on going sometimes and acknowledge that like what you are doing is moving you the needle towards the goals. It may not be visible. It may not be obvious yet, but just also understanding that most people will drop off somewhere (coughs) around those early stages when they don't see the results that they want. Yeah. And I think, again, that having an accountability buddy, having someone who understands a quest that you're on and what you're trying to achieve, mm. who can provide you with that realism yeah. of how much it actually is going to take or how long it's potentially going to take mm. um, can be something that's really helpful. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, at the end of the day, this is all about learning to trust the process, right? I think that as people, um, it's really hard not to, but we really fixate on what's ahead of us. Like we're constantly looking to the future and wanting um, to attain a certain outcome. And as a result, we don't get to enjoy that process of it. Mm -hmm. Um, So I guess it's kind of like almost like a call to action to focus on what you're doing and just trust that eventually, you know, those actions and those small little things that seem insignificant right now will eventually compound because we know that it's about practicing and putting in the reps and yeah after all we are what we do repeatedly yeah it's that concept of the gap versus the gain yeah um the the gap is where we're constantly looking ahead to what we haven't achieved or Mm. or we're constantly looking at how much more we have to do to achieve the thing we want and the gain is the reflection on how much you've already achieved and how far you've come yeah it's like highlighting small wins yeah that simple mindset shift can make such a um, a significant difference yeah to where someone is in their current journey yeah and yeah giving that nudge to keep on moving in the right direction but i do think that comes from the power of actually reflecting on where awareness you've been, mm. and that's cultivating that awareness mm. and that's what we do really well here at the process program we're constantly we sound like a broken record but that's <laughs> all that we say but it's that's like true. you've got to take that time to actually look where you've been in the past six months or look at how you've changed in the past six months, six years or 16 years. Mm. And it's just about taking that time and really reflecting essentially on where, where you've been and where you want to go and where are you now, mm. right? Absolutely. I think, you know, something that people dismiss quite often in this entire process is recognizing the need for change. Yeah. That That is actually your first step. Like you're already making a transformation because your transformation is going to happen from within right Mm. and the fact that you're even thinking about it and that you're aware of it and you're conscious of it that's step one you're already on your path to making that change happen yeah it's it's funny i was just thinking about i'm thinking about high rocks again because you literally just happened Mm. yeah but i was putting a post up last night and liam you just triggered my thought here um just kind of just some thoughts and reflections that were just floating around my mind as Mm. i was like posting about the weekend and one of them was on the concept of running yeah and you know i did my first run Mm. really about three months before high rocks 12 weeks and you know i'm kind of sitting here when i finished high rocks being like disappointed my car's are cramping i felt like i could have given so much more in the run but then when i actually wrote it out i only started running one to two times a week three months ago and before that i would probably i'd probably run on average once a month if even that Mm -hmm for mm. nine years mm-hmm. like that's what the last nine years of my life have looked like since yeah. i stopped playing rugby at, at the very most once a month mm. so in the context and after i wrote that i was like in context like actually i should be really <laughs> nailed it i should be really happy what Correct. i should yeah, yeah. It's like three, <laughs> and, and and you know made me think about okay if i was ever to do a high rocks again yeah you know, which is eight kilometers of running mm. and maybe i do one in six months if i just run once a week 
Yeah. Even if I just run actually once every two weeks. Yeah. Compared to what the last nine years has looked like, mm. that's mm. a significant improvement. Yeah. Absolutely. That's almost an, you know, almost an 100% improvement in terms of the amount of volume that I've accumulated. So that's mm. already a win because it's so easy yeah. to come out of that and be like, and I've had this chat with a lot of people who did take part in, in High Rocks who are members here who are saying like, I, I, I want to run like three times a week now. Mm. And it's like, okay, well, what were, you, what were you doing before High Rocks? None. Okay, well, what if you, what if you just run once a week? Like that's already a massive improvement that you think. Yeah. And they were like, oh yeah true <laughs> it's like you know but but we all get sucked into that yeah. like even me until i'd written that post which was ev- essentially became my journal entry mm. yeah and my own reflection i had lost track and, c- and lost context of just the bigger picture the bigger picture mm. and really like if i wanted to improve like it doesn't need to be running three times a week no it doesn't have to be serious it doesn't need to be really intense it just needs to be a little something and that's going to be better than running what once a month for nine years yeah Hmm. it's also that like there is a saying comparison is the thief of joy yeah. and i think you know we always see people around us doing different things and a lot of the habits that we actually build we learn from others because we maybe so are inspired by them or yeah mm. exactly and i think what liam was just saying was really important is you should be surrounding yourself with people that have the habits that you want to create because naturally your environment actually makes a really big difference it makes mm. it really hard to okay let's just put this into context you know you might be someone who is very self-aware and you're um, working on, I guess, like your emotional intelligence and all those sorts of things. But if you work and live and breathe in an environment of people that aren't like that, it doesn't mean you're not going to progress, but it just means that that journey will be much harder for you. Um, And I think something else that we do, we do goals every month. And a lot of the goals that we set as a team are kind of habit-based goals. For sure. And we we have a practice where we have a blackboard at the end of our office and once a month... (laughs) Slay each other because we never hit them. Once a month, (laughs) we go through the whole team and we basically go through, did you achieve your goal last month, which is normally fails, and what is your goal for the next month? But by verbalizing and saying out loud and sharing what your goal is, especially with the people that you spend (coughs) every day with, there's an accountability piece of conscious that that's built into that. Yeah. So, you know, we actually are checking in on each other yeah. Yeah. to see, cause we can see that blackboard behind all the bags to say, right, well, Liam, are you, have you managed to hit your, I mean, like, I was giving you shit uh, saying, you know, have you been doing your breaths before yeah. your lunches? Cause yeah. I'd see you eat and you yeah. didn't do a breath. I was like, Oh, failed your goal. <laughs> <laughs> and it, even still to this day, I set the goal probably six months ago. Yeah. saying yeah. I'm not going to look at a screen when I eat. Yeah. Mm. And I still, if I look at a screen for a split second, you're just looking someone around. in the office yeah. is like, <coughs> failed your goal. I'm like, it's not even my goal anymore. <laughs> yeah. But you said it was, yeah. but it, it honestly helps knowing that I know if I look at this screen in this office, like everyone's going to shout and give me shit. Yeah. So like, it's actually helping me for create sure. that habit. And I actually, really have created that habit i think that is the 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 importance of you know when you're talking about like when we say resources like that can be something physical but it can also be like your partner or Mm. your family it's like support network yes it's your own support network you need Mm. people there if you're doing really well but you also need people there if you're fucking up really to say that it's okay and you can continue right yeah i think another thing as well is like yeah there's so many things i guess like are floating into my head a part of a lot of what i do with my clients at least is i make them either weekly or bi-weekly have reflection so it's a chance to be like okay what was something that we set out to do it was x now we're going to revise it how um consistent were you with it like on a scale of one to ten do we think that we need to revise it either improve on it or create something more because you achieved it and then something i think that people really forget to do is we're like the sun is shining and it's rainbows and butterflies and life is perfect but it's not um, so it's about anticipating challenges and obstacles that are going to come up and having a plan of action. Like so it's like traveling or something. Yeah, it could yeah, be yeah. travel. It could just be like, well, I have a kid and like their schedule is a little bit crazy. So mm. like, what do I have control over? And if X happens, what's my strategy? Like, what am I going to do to still make me feel successful, but understand that like, it's not me failing my goal of doing this. It's just, I have now pivoted in a really smart way. Have you got an example? I can think of a couple. So I can think of, you know, some of the people that I'm taking through with their sleep stuff right now um, for our accountability program. And one of them, their work is just crazy right now. Um, And a lot of the habits that they had built leading into this were really good. And as soon as work happened this way, they felt like they were kind of like slipping back on their coaching app and they felt like a little bit overwhelmed by everything. So it was just like, okay, take a breath, 
let's think about it. Let's reflect on the stuff that we've set before. And what is now, and it's that dial sort of scenario. What's that number one for you? Like, what is the bare minimum you can do? And for them, it was like, okay, well, I can catch up on my daily lessons later. Like I can do that on a Sunday when I have more time and I want to do that. But maybe all I'm doing for now is just marking off on my habit tracker. You know, just one of the things that I think is the most important. And that's what they focus on. Mm. Mm. Nice. So it's the minimum minimum effect of dosh, right? So it's essentially exactly. with that dial, which yeah. is something I only learned that dial from you maybe yeah. a couple of months ago when you presented it and it's yeah. just it just makes sense it's like you don't have to be all or nothing or a hundred percent it's like find your bare minimum or your yeah. minimum effective dose okay tick that off you still move that needle forward right? exactly and Ma- massive side tangent on that though is that so okay. so many people label themselves as all or nothing people it's true and that yeah, becomes a agreed. crutch That's in yeah. so many yeah. ways right yeah and it's like i can't do it if i'm not all in on yeah. it um, so I think that is a really important conversation, mm-hmm. especially for those type A. I don't even yeah. know if it's type A people, but those people who do feel like they can't have that dial. Well, the huge thing about all of it is if you want to change, you have to encompass or you have Next to form. take on a growth mindset. And that means approaching things with a beginner's mind, just being like, I'm just going to pretend right now that I don't know what I think I know. And I'm just going to go into it with an open mind and I'm going to give it a try. Um, you eventually break down people that are like that. Um, but I also think that we've spoken about it a little bit before having, I think it's like the concept of like, you actually build resilience through self-compassion and self-efficacy. Um, you know, I am pretty sure they say like the negative feedback loop that you have in your head. Once you start to beat yourself up about something becomes a repetitive cycle. It's actually dopamine that does get released in that whole narrative. process, which is like, yeah, you have this negative narrative that just, never ends so Mm. we're trying to break the cycle we're trying to create positivity through the things that we're doing so we need to draw on experiences and highlight the small wins and start really small and do all the things that we're saying in order to do that nice Nice anything else add Liam? Um, i think i was just going to talk about like that framework Mm. that we uh, essentially like it was the four-step process i mean i share this with my clients all the time and it's something i do personally it was like well, like we've basically talked about, it's always really start small. Mm-hmm. It's like, what's the question? Can I do this nine times or even 10 times with my eyes closed? Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. We can do that. And then it's like, make it obvious. You used uh, your post-its. Yeah. I used my headphones on top of my journal because I knew I was going to do that. Yeah. Somewhere you can see it. Somewhere you can see somewhere it. Somewhere it's accessible. Yeah. It's like, okay, you want to start drinking more water. Okay. Let's place a glass of water next to your bed when you wake up. First thing you do, drink it. Sweet. Mm. We've already ticked a goal there. Mm. That's third one. It's like practice. We've all talked about the importance of it takes time and you're going to have failures. You're going to mess up, mm. but that's okay. It's like just taking that, that bird's eye view is it's not the next six weeks, the six months. We're talking in scales of 60 years here, mm. right? And then that fourth one is build. Yeah. It's like, okay, right, well, we've now, we've now created a habit. What can we build on top of that to mm. further move the needle towards your goal? For sure. You know? I think um, while you were speaking about that, I know we were speaking about it before as well, just saying the other mechanism. So the feedback loop that actually happens when creating yep. a habit, it was cue, Crave. cue craving, response, craving reward. response, reward. Um, I think with that entire mechanism, it's also important to understand that you can review your bad habits and figure out why they're happening. And then that's how you can also create the change, you mm. know, so... For people, I'm just going to use it as an example, but like for people who eat emotionally, it doesn't need to be like a disorder. It can just be like their natural tendency is to lean towards food. It's normally your craving to feel a different way. And the reward that happens from eating something that's tasty, yes, makes you feel good instantly. But over time, obviously, we understand that Mm. that then becomes a negative um, pattern. Nice. Love it. Team, thank you very much for your thoughts, your stories, your experiences. Um, and folks listening, hope you took something out of this. Of course, if you do have any questions, experiences, or just want to get our advice or ask us to be a listening board, we are always here for you. I just want to really quickly finish. Tam, you are, you now have a program that's kind of all geared towards habits, specifically within kind of nutrition and healthy. Can you just quickly tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a few things going on right now. So, um, a lot of what I do is habit based. I think, um, when it comes to, building a solid foundation in our lives we know that we need that to be there and if we try to start doing things on top of that where we haven't quite dialed it in 
things tend to kind of like crumble and fall apart. So the goal of everything that I do with the people that I work with is to just help you create positive change, teach you small actionable things that make it realistic and doable. And then we build on success. And a part of what I am is your accountability buddy. We spoke about having a support network um, as well as creating a community. I think it's really important to be able to share your experiences and your struggles with other people. And if you're not someone who's really like out there or open about sharing your own things, I think that hearing about other people's struggles and the things that they're working on as well just um, forges a really positive and cultivates a really positive movement to to kind of see like, you're not alone. We're all on this, including me. I'm a coach that has a wealth of knowledge with this and it's still stuff that I'm working on and still the experiences that I'm gonna be sharing with you. So um, right now it's kind of like in the initial phases, it's definitely something that's very new. Um, we've got a December challenge coming up, which is really cool. So it's about healthy eating habits, not necessarily saying like you need to eat X, Y, and Z, you need to focus on your protein or your carbs or anything like that, but rather how to foster a healthier relationship with food and learn about eating slowly and all those sorts of things. Um, I'm also going to be developing a movement-based life um, kind of segment to that, and then we'll speak about sleeping as well. So yeah, it's pretty much an accountability program to keep people on track and help them with things that everyone struggles with. And where can we find out more about that, Tam? You can message me either on my Instagram at Tamarin yeah, one Instagram. one one, or <laughs> you can um, I don't know actually. Is there much information out there? That's a really great. That's thing. a place. Good, good yeah, place to start. Yeah, good place to start would just be to reach out to me directly, and I would love to have conversations about it. Like this is definitely something that really fires me up, and I'm really passionate about it, and it's why I've taken it on and. Yeah, I'm excited to kind of create a movement. Awesome, Tim. Nice, Tim. Right, Liam, Tammy, thank you so much for your time. Thank Bye. you. See you guys next time.